Fort St. James is located on the southeast end of Long and Narrow Stewart Lake, which is BC's largest natural freshwater lake, and also to the north of Prince George. So that's where pretty much Fort St. James is, where, by the way, you folks do have some snow on the way today. Uh, forest industry, a growing mining sector, and a growing tourism industry. Of course, those are the top three industries there. Winters in the small town are snowy, with an average temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, and summer climate hovers just around 20 degrees. Fort St. James was ahead of the curve in 2013 when a group of prominent and well-intentioned community members headed by Peter Volk identified the need for rental accommodation that would allow local seniors to remain in Fort St. James and live in a seniors friendly no maintenance environment. The society conducted surveys, held numerous meetings with Fort St. James residents and reported a membership of over 300 in a town of only 1,700 residents, which clearly indicates the high level of community support that the society enjoyed at that time. With CMHC seed money, the society engaged the services of an architect and a project manager, located a suitable development site, and arranged for conceptual drawings and pricing estimates to build a 20-unit seniors housing complex. A local contractor who had just completed construction of an eight-unit rental complex approached the society and proposed constructing a further eight units on his site, and upon completion, selling the 16-unit complex to the Stewart Lake Housing Co-op as a seniors housing facility. Our MLA at that time even announced at the local senior center, to great fanfare, that the society would receive a $1 million government grant to provide equity for the project. The society directors agreed in principle to purchase the 16-unit complex following completion of construction, subject to arranging suitable financing for the project. Society directors even negotiated with the builder to include several senior-friendly modifications to the eight new units being constructed, including walk-in shower units instead of bathtubs, large handicapped bathrooms, and a small rear sitting area with patio door access for each unit. In addition, the center area of the complex was to house a community meeting room, which was designed to be a convenient place for senior residents to meet in a safe and comfortable social setting. The society was in progress of arranging long-term financing when in October 2016, it was informed that the project had been selected by BC Housing to proceed under the Investment in Housing Innovation Program. While BC Housing representatives were initially supportive and accommodating, a major rift developed when BC Housing insisted that the project be repurposed from a seniors housing complex to a low-income development to meet government initiatives of the day. BC Housing rules for low-income housing stipulated that a senior couple would only be permitted to rent a one-bedroom unit with two bedroom units reserved for families, notwithstanding that the society membership had clearly indicated that they were only interested in renting two bedroom units. In addition, potential tenants who did not meet BC Housing's low income criteria were not permitted to rent a unit in the complex. BC Housing even insisted that the bylaws of Stewart Lake Housing Co op be changed to reflect that the Society's purpose was no longer to provide housing for senior citizens, but to provide low-income housing. And when the Society directors refused to comply, BC Housing simply stopped responding to their requests to engage in further discussions. BC Housing then bypassed the Society by negotiating directly with the contractor to purchase the property, effectively neutering the Society and squandering the substantial community support that the Society enjoyed. BC Housing took over the fully developed and already built project simply to take credit for developing 16 units in our community with virtually no effort on their part. That the complex was not suited for family accommodation. That the low income family designation made absolutely no sense to anyone except BC Housing. And that the very seniors that the facility was originally designed to house were now being excluded were not issues that the government or BC Housing were willing to discuss. While BC Housing initially stated that local organizations such as our housing co-op knew best what community housing needs were and that they were there simply to provide project funding, 
Their actions did not match their words. They completely disregarded the clear need in Fort St. James for additional seniors' housing and arbitrarily repurposed the development to suit their own agenda. At the time BC Housing bullied their way into taking over the facility, the original eight units and some of the new units were already rented, and BC Housing was provided with a list of potential tenants for the remaining units. On takeover, however, once BC Housing rules were imposed, the complex never rented up, with up to one half of the units remaining vacant. The 16-unit complex consists of four one-bedroom, 11 two-bedroom, and one three-bedroom unit, and Fort St. James seniors had made it abundantly clear at numerous meetings and via survey results that they were not interested in renting a one-bedroom unit. Additionally, numerous interested seniors who did not meet the low-income criteria were told they did not qualify to live there. Currently, there are seven vacancies in the complex. As senior citizens can't rent there, and families don't want to rent there, as the parking lot is the only on-site children's play area. The complex is not unlike a motel, with no open space behind or alongside the buildings, and the closest playground is over four blocks away and requires crossing Highway 27. Would you want your child or grandchild to live in such a child-unfriendly environment? BC Housing knew full well that this facility was not suited for children, and they recently acknowledged that their policies may have contributed to the complex's high vacancy rate. <laughs> Instead of solving the problem by allowing non-qualifying seniors to pay market rent and allowing seniors to rent a two-bedroom unit, however, their solution which is worthy of submission to youwon'tbelievethis.com, is to rent the two-bedroom units to seniors with the second bedroom permanently sealed and unavailable for use. Really? Does BC Housing know how bad they will look when this is the subject of a YouTube viral video? If BC Housing is so lacking in imaginative solutions that this is the best that they can do, then BC Housing needs to get out of the way and allow capable and knowledgeable community members to operate the facility as the seniors friendly housing complex it was designed to be. We knew our community when we formed the Stewart Lake Housing Co-op and we know our community now. It's time to hold BC Housing's feet to the fire, forcing them to acknowledge that their restrictive policies are not working for the best interests of the citizens of this community. With almost half of the units still vacant after more than 18 months, BC Housing's ownership of the complex can only be described as an abject failure. The directors of Stewart Lake Housing Co-op envisioned this development to be the most senior-friendly facility in Fort St. James, and we have no doubt that had the development not been hijacked for partisan purposes by BC Housing, the entire complex would now be filled by the seniors it was originally designed for. Your support is needed to pressure the BC government to direct BC Housing to remove the one-bedroom restriction at Westside Court to permit seniors couples to rent a two-bedroom unit in the complex. Allow seniors to pay market rent for a unit if their income exceeds the maximum permitted by BC Housing. Designate the facility as not suitable for young children. If these actions are taken, this complex will be 100% rented in a short period of time. With your help, we can make this an election issue, and you're encouraged to contact our MLA, John Rustad, Premier John Horgan, and Green Party leader Andrew Weaver to express your displeasure with how BC Housing has managed this development to the detriment of the senior citizens of Fort St. James. If you would like to discuss this important issue in more detail with the knowledgeable and experienced community members who directed Stuart Lake Housing Co-op, you can contact Pete Volk, Elizabeth Hoy, Keith Playfair, Marilyn Goldsmith, Sandra Davidson, or Bob Motion. Please click the like button and share this YouTube video link with everyone you know. The senior citizens of Fort St. James thank you for your support.